Hello everybody, my name is Tiffany, I'm the Tipsy Artist, and we are going live in many places today, all over Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, Twitter, LinkedIn, all kinds of places, Daily Motion. there's a bunch of them, and we're going to be preparing for Easter a little bit, so I have a beautiful Easter painting here, so let's go ahead and talk about getting started and then we're going to switch camera angles and get really close down on our painting so you can watch me during the entire progress um, and process and all of that good stuff. Okay, so first of all, let me just say everything that you need is on our website, tipsyartist.com. We have these beautiful kits that come with everything that you need, shipped right to your door, makes it really easy. And also, Hello everybody out there who's joining us today. We're so happy you're here. And um, I, if I don't see your comment during the show, I always come back and uh, answer any questions and say hello back to everybody right afterwards. So I promise I'm here with you in spirit right now and I'll definitely go back and check on all of that. But hello to everybody out there. Welcome, welcome. Okay, so I like to start with a traceable. So I prepared all this for you and my goal is to teach beginners how to paint and i have a saying there are no mistakes only possibilities so and i really help make that possible too with this so going yay okay my honey bear gave me a thumbs up he went and checked me out on youtube said i am actually really going so that's that's encouraging <laughs> sometimes i think i'm going and i'm just talking away and i'm not really going all right so we're going yay all right so here we go we're going to do the blessed bunny this is for easter and this is something i've drawn out ahead of time and then i give you a copy of this with your kit here and we always provide the transfer paper so let's have let's have a few little tips on how to do this too so your kit comes with some tape it comes with the transfer paper comes with the line art and the canvas your canvas will be nicer than mine i have to use a lot of these for economy so I use these really um, cheap ones super cheap Dollar Tree campus so um, I promise you're just gonna have some depth to it nice wooden frame it's quite lovely all right so you'll have that um, I always make sure and just tape right up here at the top and um, that way it allows me to check my work as I go so I can constantly lift up and make sure that my line work has transferred over. So that's very helpful. So you don't have to do that much taping. Sometimes people get a little bit crazy with it and then they realize, oh my gosh, I can't see if I finished and you're gonna have to lift it off. So again, just tape up here at the top. Also a helpful hint when you're working with your canvas, always make sure there's always plenty of tape that there's just a ton of it that comes with your kit. So you can take long strips of it and then make sure and always connect to the wood on the back of your canvas because there's more sticking power back there so that will help a lot too and you can really line it up you can be heavy uh, handed with the tape here use a lot up here again just make sure you leave your sides and bottom to where you can constantly lift and check your work and then other really important detail is that you want to make sure that your dull gray side of your traceable is facing up and then your shiny side is facing down. That will actually transfer the image to your canvas. So that is an important detail there. So again, dull gray side facing up, shiny black side facing down, and then just tape up here at the top. Then your kit comes with a pencil. And I recommend just working on a flat surface, which I'll be doing that here today as well. And then you're just gonna take that pencil and you are going to just do you know just act like you're drawing right over the top and as you draw right over the top it will actually just transfer that image and it will create a graphite line which will be a little bit softer on your canvas now I have worked ahead a little bit for the sake of time and I went ahead and used my permanent marker too so mine's quite a bit darker than how yours will look initially and then your kit also comes with a permanent marker just like this and so you can work on that too. But let's talk a little bit about just helpful hints as we go. So letters, you wanna make sure that as you're going around your letters here, that you preserve that negative space in every single loop. So you wanna make sure that your line goes outside of the loop. Don't take the line inside the loop 
or else you can actually completely darken in your negative space and that can make your letters unrecognizable so you do want to be careful with that um, straight edge we don't have a ruler with the kit but what we encourage people to do this is your uh, paints we have really nice paints that come with it and it has a nice straight edge too so you can actually use your straight edge from your uh, paint set first to actually work as a ruler and just use that as a straight edge to continue with all of that board work here in the back we've got a nice uh, like old distressed wood happening here in the back so you can help use that too because a little bit of that does kind of go off the edge so and then I didn't mention this earlier but it's also important just to go ahead and have all of this just basically just place it right in the center of the canvas and then that will set you up just nicely these are designed to where they can easily work on an 8 by 10 or an 11 by 14 so but with an 11 by 14 you have a little bit of extra room and so you will have to extend out lines and little, you know, maybe a few little details beyond that. But on this one, it's pretty easy. We just have, you know, a few more extra lines that we have to kind of work out to the edges. And then we'll be all set. All right, let me go ahead and lift this off here so you can see how it works. I'm going to go ahead and completely remove the transfer paper. I'm going to put this just kind of off to the side. By the way, uh, the transfer paper is definitely reusable. So you, you'll get multiple uses out of this. You just might want to turn the direction of it to a different design, but it's pretty handy. So you've got that for extra uses if you want. I'm going to put that off to the side. So here is a look at what it feels like on your canvas. I did go ahead and take my permanent marker and I went ahead and just every place that I saw a line I just blackened it in with the permanent marker now the reason why I do this is because it will bleed through the paint which is actually really helpful for beginners keeps all of your trace work intact uh, so that's a nice benefit and um, and also so that you see it in the monitor so it's really help, helpful as a teaching tool as well but especially for beginners it's very helpful if you are a little bit more advanced and you want more of a like a softer watercolor look then of course you can omit this step and just leave it as kind of a soft graphite look to where it just will look more like pencil on here it'll be quite a bit softer so that's also certainly an option as well um, so okay so without further ado, we can go ahead and get started with our painting process. I'm going to go ahead and just place this down flat and then I'm going to shift the camera view over. So let me get adjusted here real quick. Here we go. And I'm going to move my, I've got a lot of stuff happening on my desktop here. All right, so I've got all my tools out and all right, so I've got one paint kit that's open. So I've got a bunch of my paints open here. I've got my paint plates nearby. These come with your kit too. I've got a lot of extra white and black already set up ready to go. You also wanna make sure you get nice cup of water or bucket of water nearby. I recommend having something that's a little bit sturdy, um, like a, at least a coffee mug so that it's stable and you don't have to worry about tipping on you. And then of course your kit comes with some napkins. I like to use a rag too sometimes. And then you have three brushes that come with it. And I use, this is my little family of brushes today. So I've got my mama brush, half inch Taclon flat brush, and then my little buddy, quarter inch flat Taclon brush, and then my little bit. So this is just a round Taclon brush. So yours will be brand new. Mine are <laughs> a little bit, well, they're loved, very loved brushes. All right, so here we go. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and get started with my background first here. And all right, I'm gonna adjust my volume here. Yours should not change or should be the same all right so I'm gonna start with let's see let me find it in the tube here 
I've used up so much of my, oh, there it is. All right, so to begin with, all right, we're going to find our titanium white. And you'll want a, about a silver dollar heaping dollop full of that. And then also our Mars black. You just need about a pea size amount of that. And then I'm going to take my mama brush. You can dip it into the water just a tiny amount. I'm going to drag the excess off here. And then let's just make sure it's nice and flexible. And then I'm going to go ahead and grab a nice big dollop of my white. And uh, just a tiny little touch of the black. And this will give me a light, really light, soft gray. So that's one first step of a color that we can use in here in our background. And then also I'm going to be mixing up a really nice kind of a minty color. So I'm going to be using my Viridian. And in a brand new paint kit, you'll also have a little foil liner on here. You will have to remove that. There's like a little um, part you can pull up and easily lift that off. I'm going to go ahead and start with about a nickel size heaping dollop of our Viridian. Now I've got my light gray and my Viridian. I'm going to go ahead and start to mix that together. A little bit of white. So this is going to make a really light, pretty seafoam color. And then that little bit of gray will kind of cool that off a little bit too. All right, so we've got that that we can work into. And then just playing ahead here, I also want to make sure I've got just a little bit of brown to work into as well. So brown is a little bit of cadmium orange with our Mars Black. So I'm going to have a little bit of this off to the side. So I'm going to keep this going over here. I'm going to take my little buddy brush. Let's go ahead and add a little touch of our black to our orange. Mix that all together. We don't want any orange in this. We just want brown. So we can go ahead and use all of that. And see now we have a beautiful dark brown. And if you want to lighten this up a little bit, you can add a little bit of white to it. See now we've got a lighter brown to work with, which really comes in handy with some of that wood grain. So we've got, we've got a little bit of this off to the side to work into this with. All right, I'm going to go ahead and rinse off my little buddy here. Let's bring that water in a little bit closer. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and start to work this in. Do you have it? Huh? Oh, yeah, yeah, that's fine. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and work this into the top section here and just strokes just back and forth here, side to side. Oh, and I think I may have forgot to mention this. This is my mama brush. This is the half inch flat tacklon brush, and I'm using that color, of course, that we just mixed up. Kind of that almost seafoam green. Again, this was Viridian, white, little touch of gray. And then we're going to go ahead and push this all the way across side to side, just working that back and forth. And I'll go right up next to that edge. And as I get close to the edge, so check the edge of your brush. See how it's nice and thin? So this can go right next to the edge. I'll hold it more like a pencil. That gives me a nice thin line edge. So again, I'll get right next to that edge there. Take this all the way across. All 
All right, really pretty. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and rinse that a little bit. Now we're going to go a little bit lighter this time. We're going to take a little bit of our white and just a little tiny touch of that light gray. And we're going to go ahead and work into this next section here. Just take this all the way across. Missed a spot. I'm going to touch that back up right there. Now you can see how I kind of touched into a little bit of that seafoam. And I didn't bother washing it off. I just continued on with that light gray. That's okay. You can have little hints of that color nearby in the next stage. I think it adds a nice touch to the patina of it. Again, light gray, so very little touch of black that's mixed into our titanium white. Just going all the way across. You can also see here that I'm just painting straight through and over that lettering. It's bleeding through nicely. All right, now I want to work in a little bit of some of this brown that we have nearby. So I'm going to go ahead and take the brush that I'm still using, my mama brush, just touch into a little bit of that light brown, which is that orange and black that we mixed up teeny amount of white in there. You can see there's barely any on the brush. While this paint is still wet, that's a, a crucial detail. You want wet to wet mixing. So I'm going to take the brush, hold it over to the side parallel to the canvas and just do a light drag just right here on the side and just pull it across here. And that's going to start to give that nice old look to the wood. And just use a really light gentle hand here. And then the wood separates here a little bit too, so I'm going to start on that edge and start another little bit of a light drag here. Doesn't have to go all the way across. Again, let's start here on this side and pull from this direction. We just want little hints of that old weathered wood happening. Just kind of lightly pull that across. And as the paint lifts off the brush, it'll start to dry brush on you a little bit. And that's actually a nice look there. I'm going to barely touch into it again and go this other direction. All right, see that's looking really nice. And then up here at the top, too, I'm going to do the same thing here on this really nice light seafoam green. We can have little touches of brown in there, too. And a few coming in from this side. Now I'm going to do a few light drags of that just all the way across. Just kind of lightly take it all the way. A little hints of that brown going the entire distance of it all the way across there. Alright, so it's looking really nice. And then this next section, I've actually got another section of the light gray happening here. So I'm going to start to take this all the way across again. A little bit of white. If you have to reload a little bit and remix, let's do a little tiny touch of that black again in there. Again, I'm going to paint all the way through here. It's bleeding through. Real light touch. looking good. All right, now we'll go ahead and touch into that really light brown again, light touch on there, just on the edge of the brush. Paint's still wet, so we're going to just lightly drag that across, starting from the side here. And 
Now let's take a few of these all the way across, just real light touch. That brown all the way across, just a few. Keep that really soft. All right, now I'm going to go back into that sea foam. Notice I'm not even going to clean off the brush because it's okay if the sea foam gets a little bit muddy, even with touches of that brown, which will kind of lend itself to a little bit more of like a creamy tone in here. That's actually a nice look, kind of makes it look a little bit more distressed. And then I'm going to go ahead and work into this next section here. Now as I get near the ear, I am going to go ahead and just start to be a little bit more intentional about having a little bit of a cut in here. Again, a little bit more of that sea foam color. You can do a, a slight overpaint there, so you don't have to be too careful about it. Let me get my little cord up out of the way here. There, it's better. All right, again, more sea foam. Still using the Mama brush. And just take it all the way through. And while the paint is still wet, let's go ahead and touch into a little bit of that light brown that we mixed up. And let's take a nice little drag right across here. Light touch in there. Hold that brush parallel to the canvas, just kind of lightly pull it across. And now let's do a few of these little touches of brown right on that seam where the wood meets here. So I'm going to go ahead and just pull from there. Light hand. And I'll go the other direction here too. If you get a little bit of overpaint on the ear, it's okay. We'll touch back into that here in a little bit. So that is looking good. All right, now let's go back into our white with our gray. Again, no need to rinse off. You can have a little bit of the, I guess it's almost like a dirty look at this point, but a little bit of that brown worked in with our gray. It actually works in our favor. This is old wood. So if we have a little bit of that worked in there, it's okay. It's actually a desired effect. Let's go ahead and work that into this entire section. That light gray to start with. Now let's do a little touch of that light brown. Pull that through. And come in on the other side. Same thing. Make sure it does start off the edge and then just pull in towards the center. All right, now let's dip back into that seafoam color, which again is our Viridian and our white, maybe a little hint of that gray, so that's just a really tiny touch of our black. And we'll just work that into this next section here. Just slight overpaint, not much, just right in through there.
turn that brush a little bit to the edge side to cut in if you'd like and then just kind of pull that out all right now let's touch back into our brown a little bit just a very light touch of that not much is needed light touch pulling directly from the side Little light touches of that. All right, and then next we'll go back to our white and little touch of that light gray. Work that into the next section here. And again, a little bit of that brown. We need to make a little bit more of a mix of the light browns. So I had a little bit more white up here at the top into that darker brown. Lighten that back up again. Have a little, let's go ahead and scrape the edge a little bit. I'm just gonna go into that lighter brown there and then just lightly pull this across. looking beautiful now let's go back to that seafoam green this is a really light hand as I'm just kind of lightly going in here if you don't want to worry too much about the cut in it's not a really big deal as we work into the bunny, it will cover that up because we'll be coming back in with a mix that has a lot of white. So it will cover it up. But I'm really light handed with that too. I don't want to be you know, too careless and have lots of like a real heavy handed amount of paint over the top. But just kind of lightly keep the wood grain effect going with that light touch. And then just kind of take it and drag it all the way across. Again, more sea foam here, a little bit more of the white and the gray. All right, while it's still wet, I'm gonna go ahead and touch into that light brown and just kind of barely touch into the side here. Drag it across. Start here from the other side, off the canvas and then pull in towards the center. And then have a few of these that actually a few of these strokes that kind of pull all the way through. All right. And then I'm gonna go ahead and rinse out a little bit. All right, dry off. And I'm gonna go back into that dark brown here. Check my edge. I had nice firm pressures I went into that. It's very thin. And then I'm going to make a few just little tiny striated lines here into that wood.
and again this is our dark brown nice firm pressure get a nice thin line there and we'll take this all the way across here too This is a real light, light touch here. And so you can see how I'm going through, but when I do come back in with my plant work later, I'm gonna have a plant, I mean, basically with planting, I know that this is going to be a green that has a lot of white in it, so it'll cover right over that very easily. The other thing you can do too, if you're a little bit nervous about it, especially if you have a heavier hand, let's go back in here. Took my little bit brush, little touch of water, and just right after you get done here, you can kind of just work into those places with a little bit of water. And then just take a little touch. And just lift out to that way you don't have to interrupt the line work that you create as you go through. Keeps that fluid and then you can lift out of those little spaces that are out in the foreground. And you know any of these little areas here too that are stubborn for you too you can so I'm just taking a clean brush, a little bit of water. Getting that lifted out. It's also just kind of a helpful hint for any little possibilities you get along the way. If you want to lift those out, if you get to it quickly enough, you can Definitely do that with a little bit of water and like a little Q-tip that can lift right off in a tiny spot or a little paper towel. Alright, continuing on, Mama Brush, nice thin line edge, so firm pressure as we go into that dark brown. And then let's go ahead and continue those little lines. Really light touch too as I do some of this wood grain look that kind of you know streaks across the top here. The seam in the wood though, I definitely have a little bit more heavy handed here and bold with that stroke. So I want a darker line and you know, basically every time that wooden slat connects, there's a deep shadow there. But with these that are over the top of the wood. I'm a little bit more light handed. Just barely kind of touch the canvas as I go across with that line work. And you can certainly add a little bit more of this to it if you want. You can be a little bit more heavy handed with this. Alright, then let's not forget about our vertical lines here. So I'll take this down a notch. And then again here. Alright, so that's looking really nice. Alright, so let's go ahead and rinse out with our mama brush. Let me get my arm out of the way so you can still see it here.
All right, so let's go ahead and work into our cute little bunny. All right, so we have a lot of the same colors that we're actually going to use on him. So we've got our white and our, our titanium white, our Mars black with our kit here that we will use for that light, soft gray. And then also there's a little bit of brown that happens on the bunny as well. So we're basically using a lot of that to begin with. I'm going to come back in with my little buddy brush. All right, just this is little buddy, basically a quarter inch flat tack long brush. I'm going to go ahead and grab a nice little dollop of the white, tiny little touch of the black. I've got a little fuzzy. I'll make sure that disconnects. If it doesn't, Oh, it did. Okay. I was like, that could require a pair of scissors. You don't want to struggle with that if you have one of those. All right, so a really nice light gray there. And we're going to go ahead and work into this bunny ear. Again, holding it like a pencil so you get to use that line edge. And let's go ahead and get a little bit more of a touch of that darker black to create a darker charcoal color. We're going to like work into that while it's still wet, get a nice soft fade there. And I want to say a quick hello again to everybody out there joining us today. We're going live in lots of places. Do you have any questions or comments? Uh, be sure to leave them. And I always go back and check every time afterwards after I teach. All right, kind of working back and forth here between a light gray and a darker charcoal gray. And I can work back into the shadows with the darker gray, which is just a little bit more of the black. And wet paint to wet paint can get a nice soft fade between the two. Wiggle the brush a little bit into this section here. Come back in with that lighter gray here in the center. And again, lighter gray in the center of the ear. Lightly touch into it. And again, more of that really light, light gray that will go over the face here of our sweet little rabbit. And then while it's still wet, you can also dip into a little bit more of that black, get a darker charcoal gray, and we're going to outline here too, using the line edge of the brush. And you can also pull into a little bit of this brown in here now too and the paint is still wet so I have a little touch of brown here and then I'm going to go ahead and just kind of lightly work this in over the wet paint. Light hand just kind of hold that brush a little bit more over to the side. Just kind of feather that out.
extend it down in here just a tad. And that's pulled back into a little bit more of that light, soft gray. Grab a little bit of water, thin that out. I don't want to lose my tray, so I'm going to go ahead and water this out a little bit. Get more of a thin consistency of the paint over the top. So again, a little bit of water and that light gray. This has kind of a fun watercolor look. Grab a little bit more of this brown here for this edge. Lightly place that in over the top here. Let's do a little bit more of a touch of white, kind of softly work that in. Again, a little bit more of a touch of brown, kind of work that in over that little shadow. And let's grab a little bit of black and with our white, create a darker charcoal color in here. And I'm going back in for that lighter gray. So I added more white. I'm softly working into it here. Kind of turning the brush a little bit more over to the side where it kind of feathers into another color and wet to wet paint touches kind of lightly blends that in and you'll notice that my brush has little touches of brown now too and with the gray and so that's actually a nice look Take a little bit of water, just lift off the edge there. So a little bit of white. And you can see how I'm getting little touches of that brown in there. It creates a nice little taupe. And then that gray colors. So they all start to kind of blend a little bit and creates a nice look for this bunny. But I always try to keep it light. Lots more white than any other color. Unless, of course, you do want to make a darker color bunny. That is absolutely wonderful as well. There are different colors of bunnies. So pulling in a lot more white here and then just kind of taking this all the way around. A little cotton tail. All right, now let's grab a little bit more of that black and with the white, that darker charcoal color. Now work on that little hint of outline around the edge. So I do want to check, make sure that your edge is nice and thin when you do this. So firm pressure into that black, a nice thin line edge. This can help you make those nice thin lines around the edge work of the bunny. You can also use your little bit brush for some of these really tiny curvy areas. So again, this is the darker charcoal, and we'll take this all the way around.
We want to get this shadow happening here too. And a little bit more of a dark line happening here. Let's add a little bit more of a defining line there and then all the way around. And then all the way around here. Now we're getting some strong curves happening, so I'm going to grab my little bit brush. And that sweet little sound you hear in the background, that's my little puppy dog. Alright, so here's my little bit brush. Let's go ahead and rotate that out to a nice fine point. Wiggle that a little bit for that sketch of little shadow in there. We don't want that to be too perfect of a line. Same thing here. Just kind of wiggle it a little bit as you do this. It's a light sketch. So still going into that darker charcoal and then we're going to come around this little outline here to make that little tail kind of pop out to the front. <laughs> then we want to accentuate that cute little nose. So still using a little bit brush. And let's go ahead and make that little, it's almost like a little upside down triangle. And that sweet little face right there. Adding just little tiny touches of this to kind of outline it a little bit. Again, keep the hand real light. So I did come in with a little bit more of the darker black in that darker charcoal. I'm just kind of sprinkling that darkness around, just kind of lightly dragging the brush through. And then you can go over this eye just very delicately a little bit with just a little bit brush. Or if this makes you a little bit nervous, you can always let it completely set up and dry and use your permanent marker too, right over the top. If you need to refine that a little bit. And then let's rinse out and let's make a little bit of a rosy cheek here. All right, so I'm gonna take some primary magenta. Let's do a little tiny pea size amount there. Grab a little bit of water, a little bit of white, a little tiny touch of that. See, it's pretty powerful still, and I need this to be way more subdued than that. Just want a hint of it, so let's do a lot more white, a lot more white, way over here. There we go. And let's do a little touch of that brown that's still over here to the side. Tone that down a little bit. So it has a hint of pink. Okay. Now add a little bit more water. And let's go ahead and just do little tiny touches right in through here. This very light pink with just a super tiny touch of brown to warm it up. And we're just making a very faint little rosy cheek in here. Just kind of lightly tapping on the side of the brush. A 
really pretty. Now I'm going to add a few more of these like in the middle of the ear. Just kind of lightly drag that up to the center of that ear and the other side. All right. So pretty. Okay. And your little bunny, mine adjusts. It seems like every time I do this, it changes a little bit. Sometimes it's a little bit more white or gray or brown. You can certainly make those adjustments. All right, but I'm pretty happy with the way my bunny looks so far. And I'm gonna go ahead and let's start working into our little uh, flowers. We'll do that next. All right, so I want to continue on with some coral themes and some pink. So I'm gonna go ahead and continue to use this. This is our primary magenta. I'm gonna do a little bit more of this over here to the side. And then let's also go ahead and take some cadmium orange. And then let's go ahead and, all right, here we go. Here is, you know what, I'm gonna grab Little Buddy again. Clean him off, dry it off a little bit here. You know, you know, I think I'm gonna do a little bit of this yellow too. Just let's grab a little bit of this primary yellow, kind of warm up that flower a little bit. All right, we still have a lot of white nearby. Whoops, just flowing water everywhere. So if that happens, take your paper towel quickly and just do a little dab. All right, there we go. All right, so I'm gonna take a, a Little Buddy brush, dollop of white. Let's grab a little touch of that primary magenta. Just pull into it a little bit. How about that orange, cadmium orange? Just mix those two together. It's already turning a beautiful like coral color. Now let's grab some of that primary yellow. Lightens it up a little bit. Let's grab a little more white. It's looking quite lovely, very peachy. All right, so let's go ahead and work this into our roses here. And if you want just a pink, um, you can just stay more in the realm of just primary magenta and white, and that will give you more of a light pink. So that is also an option. I'm gonna add a little bit more of a touch to that in there as well. Let's grab some white as we go. Push that in. So our roses initially are going to look like big lumpy circles. And same thing here. Just going to extend that up to this section as well. Grab more white. Add a little tiny touch of that primary magenta. A touch of pink in there. All right, so we have two beautiful roses to work into. Scrape this off, rinse that out. Now let's go back in with our little bit brush and just pure white this time. Just like that. And now we're gonna go ahead and just work into little half circles. We're gonna wiggle that brush out a little bit, do some firm pressure to kind of just smear it out a little bit as we go. These are starting to make those abstracted petals that come around the shape of the rose. And you don't ever want this to be too perfect. And again, just little half circles that come around in a circular pattern work in towards the center. The same thing here. Come a little bit more delicate on the smaller roses. And 
Wiggle it out here. Little half circles towards the inside here of the rose. This is that first layer again lots of white all right let's go ahead and I'm just gonna do a quick little wipe here now I'll go into a dark color so I'm gonna go into that primary magenta a little touch of that let's make a little comma right in the center just a little comma there's your little shadow in the middle So again, a little comma, and then lift off with a light hand. Now we can add little touches of that cream, not cream, sorry, peach, peach, and our primary magenta. Now let's go ahead and go in little tiny half circles. A little bit more minimal with this step. These are just little shadows with our petals. Take that around in a circular pattern. Beautiful. It's getting there. All right, looking lovely. We have some gorgeous roses happening now. All right, now let's go ahead and start to work into our greens. All right, so we still have lots of white light gray our beautiful viridian off here to the side but let's also go ahead and work with some of our other gorgeous greens in your kit we have some cadmium green and some bright yellow green so we'll be using both of these here too oh, look there's that foil lining see how it has a little thing you can lift off just do a little pea size amount there. And same with the bright yellow green. Hmm. And some white. Touch of that black. Get that gray going. All right, now let's add a little bit of that cadmium green in there. See, that will give us a nice sage. So again, let's talk about that white, tiny little touch of the black, and our cadmium green, and that's going to give us a sage. So we'll start working into that. And you can be dramatic and add a little bit more of that viridian in there if you like the look of that. I'm going to go with this different direction with my sage here. And we're going to work this into this little leaf here, which almost kind of feels like making the letter V to start with. I'll just fill that in using my little bit brush here. If you have a hard time getting to that point, sometimes the belly of the brush can get filled with paint, so you want to do a little spin. Twirl that out to a nice fine point.
We can do the same thing up here. We've got our sage green that can run up through these stems and into our leaves. And let's grab a little touch of this Viridian and a little touch of black and a little touch of white to make this a little bit darker to create a little bit of a shadow. See, that'll help define that a little bit. Then I'll work right back into it with the lighter green, wet to wet paint, soft blend. Pull that up through the center there. And that's a little flower there, so we want to avoid that. This is a stem, so we'll work into this little section in here. Another little stem. Let's grab a little bit more of that black to deepen that tone a little bit and make a little shadow right over the top. That'll bring in that real dark, it's a dark gray quality to this. Helps kind of create just a little bit of a shadow on the side to bring this out in front. More white into that sage green. Let's spin it out a little bit so we can get into that thin area. back into these stems that come in just tucked behind. I am going to cut in around this letter so that I don't lose sight of that. Another stem in here. And let's grab a little tiny touch of water to make this a little bit more fluid and a little bit more of that black. I'm just kind of softly go over the top there. And again, a little bit more water, real light, light part of that. There's a little bit of white happening here with the black, so it's a really dark charcoal look. And then we're gonna go ahead and just come in around the edges. It's creating a nice little shadow. If you get a hard line of that black, you can also work back into it with that lighter green. Just kind of soften out that transition in the center there. All right, then we have a few little leaves off here to the side. And I've got a little line coming through the center of that leaf, so I don't want to lose that. There's some white. Let's do a little bit of water. That lighter sage, just go ahead and fill this in. Work into this leaf here. Kind of come down to little points. And you can make little shadows in the middle of your leaf too, like just one little line right through the middle. I'll do that with a light gray. All right, let's rinse out a little bit here and let's go ahead and come into my white and maybe just a smidge of black. But we want this to be that really light gray again. And we're gonna make our little white flowers that come in. So let's paint into this shape. Again, mostly white, just 
super tiny amount of black just to give it a hint of gray. And if you struggle a little bit with this having an opaque finish, you can kind of turn that hand a little bit over to the side to fill that in. So we're going to do all the white first and then I'm going to come back in with a really light hand and our really light gray and just do a little outline around these two. But for right now, let's get in this really light, light white, light gray, it's like a light gray white. Comes to little points. All right, now let's spin this out. Maybe have a little bit of water here too. A little bit of black. Let's darken that up quite a bit. It's pretty dramatic. All right, spin this out. Nice fine point. And then let's go ahead and come around that shape. Add a little bit of water. Spin it into a nice fine point. We've got that darker gray. See how that comes around the outer edge? That'll help make it pop out over the front. If it's not contrasting enough, you can always add just a tiny bit more black. Just be really cautious with that. It can get really dark on you very quickly and you want to keep it kind of light. It's almost like a medium gray. See, if this is really, you can see how this is making those flowers come right back out to the front. Again, remember that little twist into the paint so that loads up the brush with paint, but it also twists it into a nice fine point, making it easier to work with. All right, that's looking so pretty. All right, let's work on our little feathers now a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and come in with this darker shade of black with a little bit of that brown. I think this is still kind of a little bit of wetness in here, a good deal. So it's still workable. Let's twirl into that a little bit. So a really dark teak brown. So a little bit of black and then our darkest shade of brown. Let's kind of feather this out here up at the top. Spin that out a little bit. Just do a quick little outline, center line. Really light, delicate hand. Little feathering strokes up here at the top. Now I want that stripe coming through the center here. So I just do kind of little soft, imperfect stripes here. And if you run into a little bit of that dry brush, again, just add a little bit of water. Do a quick little twist into the paint again. The water helps make it a little bit more fluid. 
spreads more easily on the canvas. Taking that same color, just adding little hints of shadows on the leaves nearby. And some of those lines are a little bit too harsh, like I'm not digging on some of this down here. So I'm going to come back in with my softer green, just kind of touch back into it with my softer green and just soften it right back up. Now I still have that hint of shadow in the background. So there's still a little bit of play in there with it. Again, there are no mistakes, only possibilities. And I, I need to darken up that just a tad. A little spin into that darker gray. Kind of want to accentuate that just a little bit more. Aha, looking good. Okay, so now let's go ahead and work into our letters. So a couple different options on this. Um, what I tell a lot of beginners is, let all of this set up and dry completely. And if you're unsure about that, I mean, it depends on how heavy-handed you are, but I would say typically it's half an hour to an hour just to be safe. Or you can just come back to it the next day and it will definitely be dry then, uh, without question. And use your permanent marker and just go right in over the top of your lettering. That is absolutely the easiest way to do lettering. And I'll give you, this is definitely dry up here, so I can give you a little bit of a idea of what that looks like. You know, just to kind of work that in like that. Oh, one other thing. Remember to take your, your work around the loop. Super important. You don't want to close off that negative space in the loop of your letters. So again, this is highly advisable for beginners. Uh, if you want to go ahead and paint it, we're going to be using our black paint, our little bit brush, and then I definitely add just a tiny amount of water to this. It just makes the black more fluid and easier to spread. And then I definitely twist out. Now you don't want too much water or else it can create like little droplets on your canvas. You have to be careful of that. So maybe even do a little tap like that. Make sure it's not coming out of the brush. Now a little tiny spin in that so that's loaded up. And then I'm going to go ahead and start to work over the top of my letter here. Being very care careful and cautious around the loops of the letters, making sure that I go around that negative space. And I can also help brace my hand by resting the weight of it on my pinky. Just make sure you put your pinky in a dry space. Get around a little ending. You can lift off with a light hand there and then we'll just continue on. Again, watch that little loop there on the L.
get super tiny on the S, so you have to be super careful there. coming along. Just have a lot of patience with it. Go slow. Gorgeous. Okay, we have a few little nail holes we need to work in as well. So I have a little technique for that. I'm going to rinse out my little bit brush, dry it off. All right, now let's go ahead and take the end of the brush and dip right. You know what? I don't want a real harsh black. Let me do this. I'm going to mix up a dark charcoal. So I'm going to take my little buddy. Let's grab a corner here. Take a lot of white, mix it in with our black. So it's not pure black, it's really dark charcoal, but I need to get a nice mound of it there. All right, so now I'm gonna take the end of the brush, little circle there, dip right in. See how I've got that dark charcoal now on the end of the brush? And then I can just touch directly down on the canvas. And then there are my little nail holes. Easy as pie. Watch your letters though. And make sure you get plenty of dry time for that. I just basically echo the same shape on either side. And voila, there it is. Looks beautiful. And then we can go ahead and sign our masterpiece too. So it is nice and dry here. You can do this with your little bit brush or make it easy and just use your permanent marker. Ta-da! There's our little signature. It's beautiful. All right. So there we have it. There's our beautiful little bunny for Easter. So cute. We have the whole kit that makes all this very easy at home at tipsyartist.com. And I'll have the link in the description. And we want to thank you so very much for joining us today. And we paint all the time. I paint constantly. <laughs> and so we also paint as a family here all the time, just constantly. But yeah, we're always painting around here. But we are so thankful for y'all. We want y'all to have a very blessed day. And we will see y'all very soon.